that 70% of pastors constantly fight depression and burnout for the frustration experience as a result of ministry workload, discouragement, and pressure? We help leaders grow healthy churches. We are excellent at what we do, and we are fast becoming the best of the very best. MagnaCraft Consulting is set up to help both small and large-sized churches become healthier by using proven diagnostics tools, effective retention strategies. We give the right and appropriate and professional advice. We are the certified church consultants with the Society of Church Consulting in the United States of America. Trust us to help you grow. Don't wait till it's too late. You will be glad you did. Call us now on 0802-324-2258. Email contact at magnacraftconsulting.com or magnacraftconsulting at gmail.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Magnacraft Limited. Magnacraft Consulting. Doing church God's way. Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by MagnaCraft Consulting Team, anchored by Ni Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Ni Dumade. Welcome. Happy New Year to you. Welcome to 2024. Welcome to 2024. I'm so glad to come your way today. And today I'm going to share quite some, some good uh, information to you. How we're going to roll out our content for the year 2024. Dear friends, um, thank you for hooking up with us. We are so glad you are part of this live broadcast show. My name is Ni Dumade. Uh, we're not doing ministry um, action plan again. If you need a ministry action plan templates that we did last year, December, please reach out to us and let's see how we can help you get that ministry action template for your church. My name again is Ni Dumade. I'm the founder, CEO of MagniCraft Consulting. Founder and CEO of MagniCraft. My name is Nid Umade. Um, I want to just uh, say clearly that we are here to help churches. We are helped to help, here, uh, help church leaders, pastors, church uh, founders, and general overseers, lead pastors. And so we created a company called MagniCraft Consulting. And MagniCraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches to grow healthier through empirical assessment, trainings, revitalization, and strategic blueprint. Our vision is to be the leading church health consultancy that is going to create actionable, adaptable, and sustainable solutions to churches. So that's what our vision and mission is for churches. But today, this, which, is, which is the first Monday of uh, the year 2024, I just want to do a little bit of what we're going to be doing and then possibly I'll just introduce myself and then tell us how MagniCap Consulting can help your church in the year 2024. So let's do a little bit of promo. I'm going to be introducing myself. Uh, we have told you that I'm a certified church consultant. I'm uh, also a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting and also Church Consultation University organized by Dr. Tom Rayner of Church Answers in the U.S. So I say I'd help local churches grow healthier through empirical assessment, revitalization, training, and strategic blueprint. And I believe that my expertise could benefit your church a great deal, a great, great, great deal. And so this um, subsequent Mondays, we're going to be talking on lessons from churches in the Bible. You know, sometimes we are church leaders, we lead churches. Um, we're going to just look at one church from the scriptures. We have over, almost 60 churches that were mentioned in the Bible. And I can say quickly that there are lessons to learn from these churches. What are these lessons? Can these lessons be used to improve the today's church? Because the thing is, the descriptive nature of the early church is the prescriptive nature for today's church. So we're going to look at, um, I don't know how long it's going to help us, uh, I'm going to look at some of these lessons that we're going to learn from the churches that were mentioned 
in the Bible. We're going to look at that. Uh, Dr. Tom Rayner, a fantastic church uh, consultant, a mentor of mine. Um, I learned so much from him. You want to become a certified church consultant. You are leading your church. You want your church to be healthy. You want to become a certified church consultant to lead your own church and lead others, other churches to revitalize. Reach out to me and let's see how we can engage you with Church Answers University to get you certified, well-trained, well-equipped to become an expert in consulting churches in Nigeria. Please get my book. More books are coming out. Uh, we'll get the, my book. is still a uh, few copies are available on Church Retention Pathway to Growth. And that will help your church uh, grow from where it is right now to where it should be in God. I want to just rush through uh, my introduction and probably that will be some good start for us in the year 2024. One of the things I'll say quickly is that I am in the help ministry. I mean, I, I've administrated a church uh, for five years plus and um, it's not as easy as, as it should be because you are leading a church that is uh, saddled with more of volunteers. So I'm in the help ministry and it's not um, a weakness to ask for help. In fact, biblically, there are people God has been, God has I marked and anointed and gifted to provide help. <laughs> you know, so it's not a weakness to ask for help, okay? It's not a, 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 a weakness to, to seek for expert judgment or to seek for expert advice. So asking for help it's not weakness. Asking for help uh, when you need it is actually a strength. And so please don't be hesitant to ask for help when you need it. Now, one of the things I will say quickly, I'm just, just, just showing you some of my certifications. Now, this, this is my certificate of ordination. Um, so um, that is um, as, as far as it, it can go. And so um, this is my certificate of ordination, and that was done in 2002. So I'm an ordained pastor um, as it is on this certificate. So please, I've also had some experience um, getting myself um, ordained as a pastor to the ministry of the gospel in, the, in, in Lagos. And so I did some uh, Bible school uh, on, 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 uh, with a Christian leadership christian leadership university christian leadership you know, that was a diploma in applied spirituality so uh, this was really thorough with a bible school engaged so um when it comes to uh, applied spirituality uh, i've got that certification in applied from um christian leadership university in the u.s now before i went into all these religious trainings because i did quite a lot of religious training i had a, a bachelor in, of science in chemical engineering from the university of lagos from the university of lagos okay that is my um certificate uh, uh from the university of lagos okay uh studying chemical engineering and so when I came out as a, a, a chemical engineer, and then I um, we got um, I got registered as a, as an engineer with the Society for Church for the, the, for the as the, with the Society of Engineers, the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Okay, so that's my certification as a registered um, engineer with NSC or Nigerian Society. Or, uh, of engineers in uh, in the country and so there's a, a council of regulatory engineers who in nigeria who regulates the practice of engineer engineering and so i got that um, registration fulfilling requirement to uh, practice as uh, a chemical engineer okay from current that um, was in the cover and then later on i got some certifications thank you that a good a big a big, um, a, a big appreciation to dr tom rayner who uh, was able to make this happen uh, got a, a kind of certification in church revitalization i mean if you have what it takes to go through that i uh, that's church 
revitalization, church revitalization. Okay, um, please, uh, th that's it. Um, a successful completed all course requirement for church revitalization certification. And this will help your church because a lot of churches are declining, uh, are, are not healthy, and so we need more people to be able to um, get this, uh, get, I mean, that, that's one fantastic course that would help your church. Now, as a pastor, um, you know, interim pastors are very rare, and I, we got this certification on interim pastor university, interim pastor university, interim pastor university. And so this is the completion of the foundation level of training and accomplishment for the degree as a certified interim and intention intentional pastor interim and intention or intentional uh pastor that's ipu in interim pastor university then the one that is so hot that i love so much um which i will want to also mention here is the is is the ccu that um, dr tom rayner is giving to a lot of uh, um, the, disc, uh, the discount, okay? CCU is a church constitution university. So that has been given for accomplishment as a certified church consultant from Church Answers uh, University of, uh, church, um, or Church Consultation University. And so um, in Nigeria, I love what Pastor Sheyi or Ladimiji is doing, uh, trying to regulate church administration in Nigeria because you are leading a church does not mean anything should be done anyhow. And so there's a group called Church Administration Society of Nigeria. And so I became a certified church administrator, okay? Certified church administrator. And so um, that was done. Uh, this has been well, it was rigorous. We did a, a basic advance. Right now, you have to go to Bangkok to be able to get some of these things. Uh, so, a, a, a CCA and uh, that's church administrator, uh, certified church administrator. So, uh, 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 that um, um, I can tell you how to run your church, and I can also let you know that the way you're running your church, you can actually run your church down. Then, there's one more, uh, two, three more. Uh, this is a third one that is, um, 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 Society for Church Consulting. Society for Church Consulting. Okay, that is a recognition of commission. All this was really rigorous, and I can tell you that um, I, I mean I, I love it. In, in recognition of the completion of all the necessary education and training requirement and commitment to practice in accordance with the Church Consultant Code of Ethic, Ethics, certification was awarded because of that fulfillment of that requirement. And so um, the two letters I had last year, which was very, very important to me, uh, which was very, very important to me, is um, my master's, okay? My master's in uh, business administration. Master's in business administration. And this is, was uh, granted to me um, last year. I know, I mean, it was a rigorous uh, experience. It wasn't like my first degree. And so I had the... MBA there. The letters which I did last month, December, which I wanted to just get in the cover to be able to help churches um, run their uh, outcomes, their project outcomes, we want to achieve something. And so we're able to get this out on the cover, a project management professional. It's a global body who satisfy having been formally evaluated for demonstrated experience, knowledge, and performance in achieve, achieving an organizational objective through defining and overseeing projects and resources is thereby bestowed the global credential project management uh, professional. So, um, so don't don't be surprised when we are trying to consult your church. We are bringing some form of a kind of gun chart, make, bringing some pro project perspective to it to ensure that you get. So, all this requires some a lot of tens of thousands of dollars to so just make sure that we're able to serve you well and serve you great you know the church is not supposed to be a place where you are just going to do things anyhow because god actually wants the best from the church so dear friends uh, church leaders we are well equipped to be able to help your church we're well equipped to be able to make sure that you are navigate away from all the obstacles, the hindrances, the limitation to provide you with professional advice, 
to move from where you are right now to where you should be. There's a framework that we use uh, to be able to assess churches. Uh, please don't um, underplay those um, uh, framework. They are the frameworks that can help your church know where the weak points are and where the strengths are to be able to make sure that you achieve health. And the thing is, if you are going to achieve health, if you go, if you're going to achieve health, there are many things you can achieve as a church. Growth is just one of it. Performance is just one of it. A lot of things can be achieved when you when the church is actually healthy. When the church is actually healthy. Now, most ignorance are created uh, by lack of information and adequate knowledge, which can lead to a lot of stress, a lot of burnout and frustration when you're leading the church. And so please don't miss Monday morning matters. Don't miss Monday morning matters for anything. Monday morning matters with myself, Nidumade, certified church consultant, will be coming your way every Mondays. Okay, every Mondays to bring, every Monday will be coming your way to make sure that you are well equipped to be able to lead your church well in, tw in today's world. Okay, one of the things we're going to be, we're going to help your church with is why is your church not going faster? You, you have, uh, I mean, most churches don't know that their community is growing faster than the growth rate of their church. And so we're going to look, diagnose your church, assess your church, to actually know the disconnect between your leadership, congregation, and community. Why is your church not growing faster? What is stopping your church from growing? We're going to define what your church health. We're going to define the areas of unhealthiness that is inhibiting and limiting growth. Okay? We're going to also help you to highlight some deal breakers, some systemic leads, uh, or some growth barriers, or some growth uh, or expression limitation on your church. And number two, how is your church dealing with and responding to members who attend less frequent, frequently, less often? Most churches don't know that the decline they are having is as a result of less frequent attendance of church members. So how do you intend to develop a culture of frequent attendance? How do you, develop, how do you intend to, what, um, pro, uh, to follow up on certain frequencies of attendance in your church okay how do you focus on the back door because i know a lot of churches focus on the front door less and less churches are focusing on the back door how do you focus on the front door as well as focus on the back door so that you walk on both doors to ensure that your church is actually growing and dealing with the infrequency of attendance. You can get my book, it was well explained in that. Number three, how are, are your, is your church, uh, are, are your church leaders really healthy and maximally utilized? One of the things is that the human resource you have as a church, are they being utilized? People change for many reasons. People are not constant. It's only God that is constant. So people change for many reasons in the course of their life because of education, experience, exposure, and whatever. So you need to be able to make sure that you keep digging into your human resource to unlock the potentials so that you can be able to address today's challenges in your church and then get the desired result that you want as a church. Number four, what is keeping high capacity leaders from engaging the mission and the vision of your church. You have a vision, you have a mission of your church. I can tell you that 75% of all the churches have engaged, they have a wonderful vision and mission statement. You see, but the thing is, how is your, uh, uh, what is the, uh, what is keeping the high capacity leaders from engaging your mission and your vision. So what am I saying is that how much of your leaders is participating in the mission and the vision statement of your church? How much of investment have you placed in for capacity development? I mean, I, uh, some churches are already uh, booking me for this year to come to their church, for capacity to come to their church, to hold them accountable on some things they are doing. So how is the church, the leaders, the congregation, how, are, have you, how much of investment have you placed into them for capacity development? Number five, why are young adults 
walking away from your church. You see, one of the things is that when you have millennials leaving your church in large quantities, you need to be able to get the services of a consultant, a church consultant, to come in to see how you can get yourself relevant to reach out to the younger generation so that they don't hit the back door frequently. How do you reach the millennial families? How do you reach the younger generations in your church? What is your best and effective strategies, retention strategies for achieving this? We're going to help you out to flesh out the retention strategies to reach out to the millennials. And one of the things that we're going to, we're going to brush up is your generational intelligence, your cultural intelligence. How are you going to relate to the boomers? How are you going to relate to the uh, to the um, gen, gen X, Y, and Z, and the millennials in your church? All these generations, they are different. Number six, what cultural trends are we missing? You see, those days, Cultural changes takes 10 years, but right now, cultural change can take 60 days, can take 90 days. So one of the things is that what cultural trend are we missing? Most of the declines, most of the mishaps in our church are as a result of losing out from the cultural, the opportunities that the cultural trend is saying, but we are not aware of it. And so ignorance is making us not to be well positioned to take or to seize the opportunity that that cultural trend is posing. So planning out the positive cultures and eradicate the negative cultures in our church so that we can be able to make sure that the cutting edge of relevance to the community is there. Ensuring that we learn from history so that we don't repeat history. Ensuring that we look into history so that we can to, um, make sure that the future is actually an improved version of what history is has been on the table. So you don't also repeat history. The last point, for, and then we'll wrap up now, is what are we actually willing to change? What are we actually willing to change? What are we actually willing to change? You see, once, if you don't do something new, you cannot get a new result. Look at what, what your church has gone through in the year 2023, revamp, modify, improve, critique, be brutal about it so that you can be able to, imp to get yourself to be relevant in 2024. Look critically at your methods, your processes, your systems, your entire processes and find ways to change, be willing to change some things that is not working, be willing to address some things that is um, affecting your church negatively, revamp them, modify them, improve them and then find a way to see how you continuously monitor and evaluate some of these um, um, or some of these um, systems that your church has in a nutshell now i'm going to wrap through the cutting i'm sure you've gotten some good content already uh please if this video has been a blessing to you please just do a thumbs up for us on thumbs up for us on uh, this video and please let's see how we can allow this video to move uh, to other people who need it please this video has been helpful to you please let us see your likes let us see your likes and your shares please let us see your likes and your shares i'll be so 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 grateful for you to be able to do that for us as uh, this video it comes to an end Please, we are so glad that you are part of this first um, live broadcast from all the city, all the way from the city of Abuja. Um, please, if this video, uh, if you have any church-related questions for us, please let us have them. If you have any church-related questions, you have any inquiries for us, let's have them via any of the social media and they'll show you're going to get more than an answer from me. I'm going to, I love to engage everyone who is engaging us. A big happy new year to you. Let's keep the vibes on. Let's keep the energy high and let's see how God will help us to achieve more this year. All right, please. This video has been helpful to you. Give us a like, okay? Give us a like. Share us to your community. Share us to your pastors. Share us to your leaders. 
um drop us a comment i would love to learn from you you've learned from me uh, uh, drop me a comment in the comment section what you feel about the comments that uh, the, the, the 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 things we have been sharing so far in this live broadcast okay we do consultation we do revitalization we do training and we do strategic planning look at the screen you there's a number there plus two three four eight zero two three two four two two five eight engage us we provide excellent chart consulting for health vitality and results we also reach out to us so that we can help you move from where you are right now to where god wants you to be and so we're going to draw the curtain today thank you so much for the attention may god bless each and every one of you and be a, 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 a wonderful uh, new year happy new year to every one of you till i come your way next week mondays with the lessons from the churches in the bible so that we can go deeper as church leaders to learn from the scripture what happened in these churches that were mentioned in the Bible. So for now, I say bye-bye, I love you, and God bless you.